Since the collapse of Mirage Tower, I've felt a presence haunting me everywhere I go. Hunted down in Pokemon Emerald. I first noticed it after arriving in Lava Ridge Town, that feeling of unease. I knew my stay would be cut short one way or another, so better to put some distance between myself and the locals for their safety. I'd been warned of the dangers surrounding Mirage Tower, but also of the legends. At its peak, a rare fossil of a Pokemon long since forgotten to time, the tower may be crumbling and treacherous to attempt a climb of, but that was far too great of a prize to just walk away from. I should be safe enough here, within the depths of the volcano. The opening to Fiery Path is barely a crack in the mountainside, so the golem hunting me shouldn't be able to get in. This pass through the mountain is rarely used by travellers of Holland, but I've been in touch with a researcher from Fallaba Town up north, and if he has a way to restore this Pokemon to life, that's a cause worth risking everything for. I do think I'm safe here. Even if I wanted to turn back, you can't outweigh a creature that wants for nothing. Who knows how long it lay dormant before I brought down the tower that it protected. The wild Pokemon in the area are no match for my Poliwhirl. The far bigger concern is the suppressing heat from the constant flow of lava and the smog released by the wild coughing. The deeper we go, the thicker the air grows and the more ash we find at our feet. I can see the trip taking its toll on my Kanto friend, but we can't turn back now, regardless of how tough of a trek this pass is proving itself to be. Just when I thought we'd found safety, we'd emerged into a small grove up the north side of Route 112, but this golem, Claydol, was far more devious than I'd assumed, and it appears my transgression against the desert has brought upon me more than just the rage of the sand warden. I started to run, kicking up ash into the air behind me, Poliwhirl frail in my arms, unable to even stand after the intense heat took away the last of his water. But man, it's tough enough making your way through these hone wilds during the day. Attempting this at night, while on the run, red spotlight blaring behind, rapidly gaining on you, it's an effort in vain. Fumbling around in the dark and near delirious from overexertion, I couldn't even tell a simple cactus from Pokemon, which is exactly how it got me. I ran right into the arms of a vengeful Cacturn, a whole head taller than myself. At full strength, Poliwell and I might have come up with something here, a way to escape, a small diversion, some shot in the dark that would allow us to sneak away under the twilight that covered us. But the volcanic pass takes its toll on even the most seasoned of travellers, and we are but tourists to Hoenn. My only hope here was that the fossil we'd found would find its way to another, somewhere down the line, some other traveller passing through one day to revive the claw and the life of Anorith that it held within. We'd barely even scratched the surface of this adventure, and it may well have been my last. I definitely had the great Helix looking over me today. With luck beyond imagination, our adventurer Carrot has returned at last and come to my rescue. By sheer coincidence, he's also been traversing Northern Hoenn and was able to lead me away to the safe haven he'd carved out in a nearby tree. His secret base lies here, right outside the passage, into the desert. It'd been so long since I'd seen another trainer, and longer still since seeing Carrot's bug-eyed little face. His Grovile's gone and evolved into a Sceptile now and the rest of his team is slowly coming together too. We swapped stories of our travels since our time apart, and it turns out we've both got our sights on Fall Arbor Town. He's heard tales of a war that's raged generations between two bloodlines, and his adventurer's curiosity cannot resist. The posters on the walls of his temporary home tell the story, Surviper and Zangoose, the two deadliest and fiercest Pokemon in the Hoenn wilderness. Their ferocity knows no bounds, having evolved within their harsh, restrained restrictive environment while competing with each other for the limited resources in the area. The search for Hoenn's deadliest Pokemon could be a fun idea for our next big adventure. <sighs> I see now that this claw fossil may be better protected in the arms of another. Carrot fought off Claydol without even breaking a sweat, and again I hear the wisdom of the Great Helix echoing in my mind. I think this is meant to be. Together Carrot and one day Armaldo brought back to life. So this was a bit different. I wanted to lean into storytelling way more this time around, so that's what I tried to do. 
Let me know if you like the change in format. Uh, writing is really hard for me, but it's pretty fun, even if it sounds kinda janky. Uh, if you want to see more from this series, hit subscribe or go to my Patreon to download the project files, um, etc, etc. Okay, goodbye.